What's going on and welcome back to another money saving gear hack and how to and in this video we're going to be going over the setup and configuration of the Prusik Prusel safety lanyard and drag line. Now this thing can be utilized in a lot of different applications. You can utilize it like I said as a safety line or safety lanyard for helicopters and vehicles. For the helicopter portion you tie this into the center of the aircraft, it's connected to your belt, preventing you from falling out of that aircraft if you're riding doors open and you're infilling and exfilling onto an objective. Whether you're military or law enforcement, you can apply it to both. Uh, for vehicle stuff, predominantly more for the military side, if you're a gunner, you can utilize this over a full-blown body harness system. I know a lot of guys that don't wear anything when it comes down to it. Uh, I utilize this just because in the event that vehicle were to roll over, I would have something that would keep me semi-connected to the uh, vehicle so then that way the guys in the back seats could pull me in over wearing a full-blown harness system that was covering up a lot of equipment that I was going to need in the event that we took contact uh, and I was in the turret and running the, the machine guns that I was running. So. Uh, I utilize this for vehicle work. Uh, I know a couple of other people that did as well. And then finally, you can utilize it as a aid to get a casualty that is out in the open back behind cover. You tie this into the back of their plate carrier or their drag handle, and then you drag them to cover. So that way, one, you can employ your weapon system in the event that you find yourself in a situation where you have to defend both yourself and that casualty, as well as that casualty can provide cover fire for you as you drag them behind cover to be able to provide and render aid to them. So you do have a couple of different options when it comes to the use and function of this. Uh, when it comes to the materials, you may want to use some deductive reasoning and apply some common sense. If you're going to utilize it as a helicopter safety lanyard, I would gravitate more towards utilizing um, dynamic rope. It can be very expensive and usually needs to be a collective purchase. Uh, for a lot of different dudes because or for a group of dudes within an organization because that spool of dynamic rope is going to be expensive uh, this is accessory cord from sterling ropes it's uh, seven millimeters it does have a little bit of stretch with it but it is not dynamic rope by any means so uh, with that this will work if you want to go at it alone and just set it up for your individual kit uh, as far as like the uses go. I haven't really been working with helicopters recently, so this has become more of a drag line versus a helicopter safety lanyard or vehicle lanyard. So um, with that, uh, I wanna dive into all the materials and everything that's, and, or the other materials that are on the table so that way you can see what's going on. Uh, there are uh, quite a few options when it comes to carabiners that are out there. I prefer the Kong USA carabiners, whether you go with this Tango, this is an older version of it, the newer ones look a little bit different, but you have the Tango, and then you also have the Frog uh, Cable, I believe is what it's called. Uh, that's another really awesome system that you can utilize as your tie-in method. Uh, it works more like a claw rather than a than your standard carabiners. This guy is really nice because, and both systems are really nice because they're really hard to confuse with anything else and the safety mechanisms are awesome. This guy specifically, you depress the back and then it opens it up. It will not open unless you um, depress the back side of the carabiner. So I prefer this just because it's one of the easiest ones to use and you also have this loop at the bottom that you can run your lanyard through so that way you don't accidentally leave your carabiner in the vehicle or the helicopter because you probably won't get it back at that point. So um, I prefer these systems, the uh, the Kong Frog. Uh, like I said, it works more like a, like, a, uh, like a claw, so to speak. It actually kind of closes and opens together like that. Um, you have to actuate both sides of that system for it to work. It won't just do one side or the other. So. Uh, that's my biggest recommendation when it comes to carabiners. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more cost effective, you do have some options. You can go with your standard carabiner with your screw gate. Super easy, super simple, super cheap. However, if you tighten this thing up too tight, it can be very difficult to unscrew and or it won't unscrew. I've had it happen to me. And then you're usually caught cutting away your lanyard from your belt. So... It's an option when it comes down to it. If you don't have a whole lot of money for some of the nicer systems that are out there, the next best thing would be your twist open carabiners like this guy. 
not very expensive. I've seen a lot of guys utilize these over a lot of other systems. Typically though, they'll have a little bit of a loop at the bottom so that way that cable isn't getting caught up here in the uh, main carabiner portion. And then last but not least, you have something like this magnetic carabiner. This is the black diamond. I believe it's the magnetron. Uh, you depress both sides of that magnetic lock and then it opens right up and then it won't open at all when those are engaged. So you have a couple of different options when it comes to carabiners. Uh, like I said, I prefer the Kong USA above all of them, but these other systems are really, really good. When it comes to this whole system as it's set up and what it looks like when it's all said and done, when you tie everything, um, you're gonna have your Prusik, which will extend and tighten up. So that way you can uh, lengthen or extend this to its full length, which is about five-ish feet, five and a half feet, um, and put that up there. And then when it's all closed up, it's about th a little over three feet, I believe. And that's with a full length of about 12 feet of cord when you tie the whole entire system together. I only have about 10 feet of this left, so um, this one's gonna be pretty short and small. I would highly recommend sticking with the 12 foot length just because it makes it really, really easy uh, to tie this whole thing and set it up. Uh, you'll see with this it can be a little bit a little bit harder with that shorter length. So uh, with that, when it comes to the uh, these ends here, I would highly recommend heat shrinking them. It's just going to prevent the cord from fraying and uh, unraveling on itself, as well as this four inches of uh, heat shrink that comes straight out of the package uh, is just a reference for making sure that you have enough length on either side of this knot so that way it doesn't untie itself. So you want about six inches total, so that's about roughly six inches. So tip that I learned from a PJ. Um, I mean, I learned this whole entire system from a PJ, so it is very nice when it comes down to it. So when it comes to tying this, though, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It does take a little bit of time. I would highly recommend that you take your time putting this together because uh, you want it to look nice and neat when it's all said and done. Uh, you don't want this to uh, look kind of loose and poorly put together. So you're going to have your large loop, which is over here, and then you're gonna have kind of this S shape in the middle. So I'll fold this up here so that way you can actually see it. So your loop is gonna be over on this side, and then you're gonna have kind of this S shape right here. Um, it's all separate sections, or for the most part, but you'll want to set it up this way so that way you can tie your figure eight that you can see right here and then have roughly around four inches from where the end of this portion of the rope is to the end of the smaller loop. So uh, four to six inches is just going to give you enough to be able to tie this onto either the back of your belt or tie it into the D-ring that is going to be on the front of a lot of the tactical belts that you see out on the market right now. So and then your large loop is gonna make your Prusik portion. So uh, with that, I'm not gonna get really into like making these knots nice and neat uh, just for the sake of time, but I will try to make them as neat as possible. Uh, it's one of those things, take your time when putting this thing together. Don't don't try and cut corners because uh, you want these, night, these knots very, very neat happy knot is a clean or a clean knot is a happy knot and a happy knot will save your life so uh, that's kind of the uh, rule of thumb that I learned from a PJ a long time ago so so not the prettiest figure eight but it'll do just for the sake of the video take your time when it comes to tying this uh, you don't want short tails like this side and you want it roughly around that length for the other side. So, but for the sake of the video and the length of the video, I don't want it to get too long and, and lose you. So, so that's going to be your figure eight side. You want that loop on this side to be able to tie into your belt, like I said. And then this large loop portion is where you're going to make your Prusik section. So when it comes to making the Prusik, the easiest way of doing it is finding the center of your loop taking three fingers and then three wraps around your index finger and then three wraps around your ring finger. 
So it's going to look like that when it is all said and done. And then you're just going to take your ring finger side, pass it over. Oh. And if this happens where one side doesn't have enough loops, you just make an extra wrap around like that. So if, if it looks like this, just make an extra wrap and then you're good to go. So from there, and then you're just going to tighten it all up or at this point, you can take your other index finger and start pulling the slack out and opening up that essentially passageway. So then that way you can pass your knot and small loop through this system or through this side. So once you get it to about there, be able to fit three fingers or so, it'll look like that. You'll take your small loop portion, pass it through. Try and keep control of your Prusik, otherwise this can get real nasty and real ugly real quick. And then you have to go back through and either redo it all or clean it up. So at this point, here we go. So this is where it can get real tricky and this is where you can see 10 foot of rope is not nearly enough. So from here, trying to control all this, you're just gonna start pulling the exterior material to the or the exterior portion of that Prusik in and cleaning all this up. Same with this side. I always go from the outside in just because it's the easiest way to kind of control everything to where you're roughly right about here. So looks a little bit cleaner at this point. And then what you might find is one side may end up being a little bit longer. All you have to do is find that long side and then push some of that material through to the other side to lengthen that other side of the loop or of these two loops like so. And then boom, there you go. That looks a lot better. And then from here, you can take your carabiner, tie that in. Now, if you have one of these Kongs or you have a Petzl or another carabiner device that has one of those loops at the bottom, before you get to this portion and building your Prusik, take that large loop, pass it through the, uh, the little loop at the bottom of your carabiner. So then that way uh, it's gonna sit right about here. You'll tie your Prusik and then you'll be able to uh, pass your small loop and knot through it. So that will be how you kind of set that up. So as you can see, it's just dressing things up just a little bit, making things nice and neat, making sure it actuates and extends and contracts like it should. you're good to go and that is your Prusik Purcell safety lanyard and drag line. Now when it comes to the actual setup of this on your belt the reason why you want four to six inches from the knot to the end of the loop is so that way you can tie this into your belt on the back side if you want your your tie-in point back there and then I would just make sure that your little hitch right there connects to the bottom like so. So then that way you can take this, connect it into the carabiner and you don't have some like weird stuff going on in the back where this is up top and then it's like touching your plate carrier and all of that. Make sure that this guy is set up just like that. And then the other option is you tie this into the D-ring that's on the front and that's my preferred method because uh, fortunately, I have never known or I don't know anybody that's fallen out of the helicopter or um, yeah, had any type of situation like that, which would be rather unfortunate. Um, 
but in theory, so to speak, just kind of a couple feet off the ground when uh, playing around with what happens if somebody does fall out, how do we recover them? I prefer running this on the front side so that way if I fall out, I'm looking at the rope as it's as I'm hanging out of the helicopter and I can grab onto this and then the dudes in the helicopter can recover, me, recover myself. Um, so you can set it up like that, but on the back side, you'll just need to have like a couple wraps of 550 cord or another small carabiner that you can just clip that into because it doesn't really want to clip in like you can see here. So uh, just make sure that you have something that you can tie this carabiner into so that way you're not fighting that whole entire system. But as you can see, this whole the 10 foot length thing is really, really short. It really isn't enough in my opinion. I feel that uh, 12 feet is enough because especially when you have this whole entire thing on your system, on your belt, and on your body, it's you want that little bit of extra length. So it gives you the freedom of maneuver, especially when you're in a vehicle, and then especially when you're in a helicopter as well. Um, tying into the center of the aircraft, it can get real tight and you can feel like you can't really move a whole lot if you have a really, really short lanyard. So, and like you can see, when it's completely closed up, you have a significant amount of additional cordage for uh, that 12 footer that's up top there. So, so when it comes down to total cost, the Prusik Purcell itself is gonna cost you roughly between 50 to $85. It's really gonna come down to the carabiner that you're gonna choose. The Kongs are gonna be a little bit more expensive. They're gonna be in that $50 ballpark range. Uh, versus some of the simpler systems that are going to cost you a little bit less. The cord itself, if you go with this 7 millimeter sterling rope, it's going to cost you roughly around $30 to $40 for about 50 feet. So you'll be able to make four or five of these things out of one uh, strand of rope. And uh, that way, in the event that the line or the rope itself gets damaged, frays, whatever happens, it, get cut, it, it gets cut or you have it cut away because it gets caught up and bound up, say, in, a, in an aircraft you have the ability to replace it and it's not going to cost you another $150 or more sometimes to be able to replace that whole entire lanyard system. So uh, with that, this video's intent is really just to show you how to build the system. It's not really going to be uh, the aspect of the safety side of things. I'm going to talk to the PJs that I know, see if I can get them to send me some reference material and things that you guys can take a look at as far as like the fall ratio stuff goes and uh, concerns when it comes to like aircraft safety and utilizing lanyards and all of that uh, just because that whole piece is really important but the intent of this is to show you how to set the system up and offer you alternatives to a really expensive system that if it gets damaged in the slightest way you're gonna have to replace it because it's not safe practice to go in and try and remove stitching and restitch everything back together because it can compromise the safety and the integrity of that whole entire lanyard system as well as if you break your carabiner then it's like oh man now I have to what am I what am I going to do so uh, it's not really that easy to just cut the carabiner away and then throw a whole new system on because I know a lot of the lanyard systems out now are starting to gravitate towards the Kong USA systems versus just a standard carabiner so uh, it's not really easy to just go out and replace some of that stuff so uh, with that uh, I will try and get that safety aspect piece in so that way you guys can see and read into all of that um, I've had actually a couple of people based off the Instagram post on how to put one of these together throw me some information for that I'll include that in the description uh, with that if you have any questions please feel free and ask if I don't know the answer to it I'll talk to the PJs I know try and get them to interject their comments and uh, recommendations when it comes to that piece. Uh, they're gonna be able to better articulate some questions when it comes down to it. So uh, with that, please feel free, ask any questions that you have, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.